Tesla's network of superchargers is a core component of the Tesla ownership experience. And while they do make it pretty easy, this video is intended to be a comprehensive guide to supercharging. So whether you're a new owner or an existing owner or just brand new to EVs in general, hopefully you learn something from this video. So first off, what is a supercharger? This is just Tesla's name for their DC fast chargers. So this is generally where drivers are gonna stop when they want a faster charge versus charging at home or overnight at a hotel. So you can really charge up a lot faster at Tesla supercharging stations versus some other charging options. Power output at these stations range anywhere from 72 kilowatts at their urban locations to 150 kilowatts at their V2 superchargers and all the way up to 250 kilowatts at their V3 locations. More kilowatts just means faster charging. So you're gonna charge a lot faster at a V3 station at 250 kilowatts compared to an urban station at 72 kilowatts. Urban superchargers are pretty easy to spot just because they use a different design than the V2 and V3 stations. And you'll usually find these in longer term parking locations like city centers or parking garages. V2 and V3 stations are relatively similar looking, but if you do look a little bit closer, V2 stations have a slightly thicker cable than V3 stations. This is because those V3 stations can achieve faster charging rates, so they need a little bit more amperage and they actually use liquid cooling in the cable. So they're able to make them a little bit thinner. In most cases, V2 stations also split power between stalls. So you may see these marked as 1A and 1B. So if you pull into station 1A and plug in your vehicle, you'll get the full 150 kilowatts at this V2 station. But if your buddy pulls up, into stall 1B, you're actually gonna split that charge between those two vehicles. V3 stations do balance power a little bit, but they're a little bit more dynamic about it, so generally you don't have this issue with the newer V3 stations. So what about finding these supercharger locations? Tesla does have them all listed on their website, so I'll have the link down below if you just wanna see what superchargers may be nearby you. You can see the address, information about the station, and also its power output, whether it's an urban station or a V3 station, you'll see that kilowatt output on the website. If you do have a Tesla vehicle, you can also search for the stations inside the app. So if you scroll down in the app to location, you can find charging stations close to you. In the app, you can also send that supercharging location directly to the vehicle, which is pretty handy. So when you hop in, it's already navigating to that station. You can also use apps like Chargeway to search for Tesla superchargers and filter by power output. However, the most common way I see Tesla drivers and the way I generally do it is just finding stations directly on the touchscreen. You can search for stations here and even filter by power output as well. But the best part is if you are plugged in to travel to a destination destination that is further than the range that your vehicle can handle, it will actually pre-plan those stops for you and tell you which supercharging locations to stop at. So generally, I don't do a ton of planning with my road trips anymore. I'll just plug in my destination and the car will automatically plop those supercharging stops on there for me. The main reason I do this is Tesla will actually precondition the battery to prepare that vehicle for supercharging. So it's important when you are navigating to a supercharger, actually plug it in the map so the vehicle knows where you're headed. When you get closer to the station, you'll probably see a pop-up that says preconditioning for supercharging, and this is just preparing the battery to optimize that charging session so you can charge as fast as possible when you plug in. When you arrive at the station, you can pull into an open stall. Make sure you remember that the charging port is on the back left of the vehicle, the driver's side of the vehicle in the US, so make sure you keep that in mind when pulling in. When you back in, you can get out of the vehicle, go over to the stall, pull the handle off of the holster, and click the button on the charging cable. That will open up the charge port on the vehicle, which is pretty cool. And then you can plug in from there. As soon as you plug in, your car will recognize that it's plugged in, and the Tesla network will recognize that a vehicle is plugged in as well. They'll do that little handshake and immediately start charging the vehicle. The charging station and the vehicle will negotiate and determine how much power that vehicle needs, and handle the entire charging session automatically. While plugged in, you may see the rate of charging fluctuate a little bit. Just keep in mind that charging is gonna be a lot faster when the state of charge on your battery is lower. So when you're in that 10 to 20% range, it's gonna charge a lot faster than if you're at 70%, for example. It may also be slower if your vehicle isn't properly preconditioned. So if you traveled from somewhere not too far away from the supercharger, your vehicle might not have enough time to precondition 
and properly get ready for that charging session. And if there are other Teslas charging near you, then that may also slow down the charging rate a little bit. In my experience, most of the charging sessions on V2 stations are anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes, depending on how much I need to charge up. And the vehicle is actually gonna tell you if you are on a trip, how long you need to sit there and charge until your vehicle is ready to continue that trip. V3 sessions are definitely a lot faster just because they have a higher output. So I am generally under 20 minutes at V3 supercharging stops. So what about paying for supercharging? The nice thing about driving a Tesla is again, a lot of this is handled automatically. So when you do take delivery of your car and are starting to set up your Tesla account, you'll generally have to add your credit card information to your Tesla account so that when you plug into a supercharging session, it recognizes who is plugged in, it knows your payment method, and it will use the payment method on file to pay for that session. If you wanna see the cost of supercharging, you can view that on the Tesla map as well inside the vehicle. In most cases, they are charging per kilowatt hour, so you'll pay based on how much energy you pool during that supercharging session. However, in some places, it is time-based, so they have different rates depending on how fast you're charging and how long you're plugged in. I've been fortunate to have free supercharging for a while, but in most cases, I've seen these sessions be anywhere from $10 to $20, really depends on how big of a session I have and how long I am charging. In most locations, Tesla also charges cheaper rates when power is cheaper. So if it is later in the evening or early in the morning, rates are gonna be a little bit cheaper than those peak rates in the middle of the day when everybody is using electricity. If you've been following the Tesla supercharger network or just EV news, you may have heard that Tesla is now opening some locations up to non-Tesla vehicles. So this is only at select locations right now. However, they are releasing more and more as the weeks go on. And the process for charging a non-Tesla vehicle is similar, but it's just not as seamless as using a native Tesla vehicle. You will need to sign up for a Tesla account and have the Tesla app. Once you've set up your account and downloaded the app, you'll have to go into your profile and then choose charge your non-Tesla. On this screen, you can see where those non-Tesla charging stations are available. And when you arrive at the supercharging site, you'll have to choose which stall you are pulled into. Once you select this, you can unlock the charging station because at these locations there is something called a magic dock that is essentially a built-in Tesla to CCS adapter on the charging cable that allows non-Tesla vehicles with the CCS plug to charge. And from there the process is pretty similar. You will have to manually open your charging port and plug in your vehicle. However, after that, the process is pretty similar. You'll pay with the credit card that's on your Tesla account. So that is the current landscape of the Tesla supercharging network. However, there are some new developments and some new releases that are likely to come in the next few months here. The first one is just rolling out to non-Tesla vehicles with the NAX or Tesla connector. So you've seen announcements from Ford, from Rivian, some of these other big auto OEMs that are switching to the Tesla port. So Right now, that is not available on any new vehicles I know of besides Teslas, but when that starts rolling out, I know the goal is to have a Tesla-like experience at supercharging stations. So you can charge a non-Tesla with the Tesla experience. Tesla is also working on V4 superchargers, which are expected to have an output of 350 kilowatts up from the 250 in the V3 stations. And these have a design very similar to the urban superchargers, just a lot bigger because they're using more power. These haven't rolled out in the United States yet, but we have seen these in some other countries. So I'd expect that to be coming to the US very soon. And that is it for my guide of supercharging. If you're a Tesla owner, I wanna hear what I missed here. If you're new to Tesla or new to EVs, if I miss something here you have questions about, please let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.